Hello and welcome to today's Stitch Text Effects tutorial. My name is Chris Parker and this project is going to be a lot of fun and you're going to learn a new thing or two as well, guaranteed. So check this out. This is the design project you're going to create today. When you're done, you'll know how to select individual letters with one click, how to create a path of stitches, how to create a custom brush and more. So are you ready to master this GIMP text effect? Awesome. Let's do it. Let's create our document for this project by going up to file and selecting new. For the dimensions, we're going to type in 1920 for the width, 1080 for the height. And then for advanced options, I'm going to set it to 300 for the resolution. And I'm going to fill it in with white for now. Actually, let's go ahead and change the background color right now to this blue color right here. Or choose any color you want. If you want to use the blue that I'm using, type in this hexadecimal number right here. Let's go up to edit and select fill with foreground color. Next, I have a image file that I provided for this project as well. So if you downloaded that, go ahead and grab that file, click on it and drag it over your document and it will be added as a new layer. If you need to, you can locate that file to download in the description below. Let's move this layer below the background layer by clicking on this icon. Next, I want to blend this layer in with the layer below so that that texture shows through. So let's go up to our blending modes here and select multiply. Now that that texture is showing through, we can see that it's not the original blue color. It's more of a teal color. So why is that? Well, the layer below here has some color in it. And when you blend it in with that blue color, it creates the teal color. So what do we have to do to get this original blue color? Well, we have to take our texture layer here and desaturate it. So let's duplicate that layer by clicking on this icon right here. And the reason why we're duplicating it is maybe later on we change our mind and we want this teal color. So this is working non-destructively. So you don't have to go back and start over from scratch when you're working on your project and you decide you made a mistake or you changed your mind. All right, let's go up to colors and select desaturate, desaturate, click OK. And now we have that original blue color shining through. All right, let's grab our background layer here and let's add some text. Grab your text tool. And for this project, I'm using a font called Oswald and I want to select bold. So this is a free font. If you want to use this font, find the link in the description below to download it or just use any font that you want to use. I recommend something large and bold. So for the size, I'm going to do 400. And then for the color, I'm going to do this red color here. So here's the number to type in this box if you want to use the same color. In all caps, I'm going to type out stitch. All right, let's grab our move tool and move this up here to the top. Right about there should be good. Actually, let's align this in the center of the document here horizontally. So let's grab our alignment tool with the letter Q or just come up to your toolbar and select it from here. To activate that layer or to tell GIMP that's the layer you want to align, you need to click on it to tell GIMP that's the layer to align. Once you do that, come over to your alignment tool options here and in relative to select first item, click on this icon, and then it's perfectly aligned in the center, at least horizontally. And the reason why we're not doing it directly in the center of the document is because we're going to add a shape down here with a secondary color. So let's do that by creating a new layer first and let's call it shape. Click OK. And I'm going to grab my zoom tool here and hold down my control key so I can click once to zoom out. And we're going to grab our path tool here to create that shape. And we're going to start on the outside of the document here, which is why we zoomed out. So I'm going to click right about here. We get an anchor point. And this time I'm going to click on the inside of the document, but I'm not going to let go of my mouse button. I'm going to click and hold it and then drag my mouse to get these two handles, which will allow me to bend that path. 
Let's create another one right about here. Click and bend. One more outside here, click and bend. All right, we now need to go all the way back around to the original point that we started with right here and hold down your control key and click on this circle and that closes that path so that we can now fill it in with the color. So let's come over here to our tool options and click on fill path. From here, we can click on fill to fill it in with the same color we used before because it's going to use the foreground color that we have activated right here. So let's click on this and choose a different color. I'm gonna go ahead and choose this lighter blue color. Click OK and then click fill to fill it in. Now we're gonna go up to our blending mode and choose a different blending mode. So let's select screen. All right, we now have our secondary color and we can add stitching along this path inside of the layer boundary here. But before we do that, we need to add a path around our lettering as well because we wanna put stitching around the letters as well. So let's do that by grabbing our stitch layer here, right clicking and selecting alpha to selection. So that selects all the letters. And then to add a path, you go up to select and select to path. Let's deselect with select and none. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our paths panel here because this will show us the two paths that we created. If you're not seeing this panel, go up to Windows, Dockable Dialogs, scroll down and find paths right here. So I have a unnamed path and when I click on it, it selects the path of that shape that we created. And then selection is the stitch path. So let's rename these so we know which one is which. So for unnamed, just double click on it and let's call it shape. For this one, I'm gonna call stitch. Now that we have our pass, we can add the stitching, but before we can add stitching, we need to create the stitch for the stitching. So let me show you what I mean by that. We have to create a new document by going up to file, new here, and let's type in 100 by 100. Resolution will stay the same. And let's fill it with the foreground color, but let's switch the foreground color to black. Click OK. And what we need to do is we are going to hand draw a stitch and then use the power of GIMP brushes to automatically apply it to the path. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to choose our color for the stitch. I'm going to use an off white. I don't want pure white. It's going to be too bright. Click OK, then come over here and create a new layer. The name doesn't matter for that particular layer because we're only using this document for creating that stitch. Let's go over here to our brushes and click on this icon right here. And it's hardness 050 or number two. Now grab your paintbrush here and let's go to tool options and size it to, I'm just going to double click here and type in 22. We are now going to create a V shape, which is going to be the shape of our stitching. It doesn't have to be perfect or symmetrical because stitches in real life aren't perfect either. So let's start in the top left here. Just click and drag down and paint out that letter V. So something like that. If you're having a hard time getting to the center, it doesn't have to be perfect again, but if you want it more symmetrical, you can go up to image and select guides, new guide by percent and select vertical, click okay and you'll have a guide. My guide isn't showing because I have it turned off. So if we go up to view and select show guides, it's going to show the guide. So that'll help you guide your brush to the center point. I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna go up to select all and that's going to select the entire document then edit copy now that we've copied that that shape that you just drew became a brush so check this out come over to your brushes panel here and you will see right here the very first item is going to be that shape that you created now i have a couple of them here and that's because i created one previously so now go ahead and select your new shape. You can close out this document because you don't need it any longer. Now, the other thing you're going to notice is 
my brush, my letter V or my stitch is rotating as I move the brush. And that's because I have specific tool options already set up for my stitching. So let me show you how to set up your tool options for applying the stitching. Come over here to your tool options. And what we wanna do for the size is double click on it and choose 22. The angle is going to be minus five and then the spacing is going to be 65. But here's the key. You need to set up your dynamics for applying the stitch. So I have track direction. If you click on this icon right here, you'll see a menu of different options. Each one of these will apply your brush differently based on the settings saved in each of them. So come down here and select track direction. Once you have that, you can begin applying the stitching. So let's do that. Let's grab our shape layer here and let's do that one first. We also need to go to the paths panel and make sure we have that selected and we need to turn on the visibility of that particular path. Click right here to do that and this red outline represents the path. Now we need to go up here and select our path tool. Click on the red line then come over here to stroke path come down here and select stroke with a paint tool make sure that's selected paintbrush of course and then turn on emulate brush dynamics now real quick before we add the stitching we have to create a new layer for the stitches to be applied because we're going to add another effect to the stitches once we're done so let's come up here and click on our create a new layer icon. Let's call it stitches. Make sure it's filled with transparency. Click OK. And now we can add the stroke and boom, there is the stitching. How cool is that? I love it. All right, let's go up here to our pass panel. Let's turn on the stitching for the lettering here and then we'll repeat those same steps. All right, now that we have all the stitching added, let's go to our layers panel again here. Make sure stitches is still selected because what I wanna do now is I wanna add a little depth to the stitching by adding a drop shadow. So let's duplicate this layer, turn this one off, and I'm going to double click here to rename it stitches drop shadow. So let's go up to filters, light and shadow, and choose drop shadow. From here, you can adjust the different settings here based on your own creative vision. I'm gonna increase the opacity just a little bit and drop the blur radius a little bit so that the drop shadow becomes a little bit more apparent. And I'm gonna change the angle a little bit here so that it's more beneath the stitching versus at an angle. So maybe something like that. So that just adds a little bit of depth for those stitches. All right, now it's your turn to complete this text design project and to post it in our private Facebook group. To join our group, you can locate the link in the description below. Also, please support my channel by commenting on this video, liking it, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Don't forget, to check out my GIMP text effects playlist that has over 20 more tutorials and projects on text effects. Thanks for watching and have an awesome day.